There are problems associated with the building, since the school was built in 1889. There were problems associated with um, the staff, because we had a very young staff and uh, there was a lack of expertise. There were problems as far as the children were concerned because, well, simply because they live in Newtown, which is a very busy industrial area. And there were also problems of resources, or should I say lack of resources and their um, storage and use. We have overcome a lot of our problems um, simply by reorganising our school. Uh, instead of having a traditional classroom with the one teacher, the one class for a whole year, we've set up our rooms as subject area centres. Do you remember Susan and Timothy? Our first area we call the communication centre and here we teach um, reading, writing, spelling, written expression. The second centre we call the investigation centre and here we deal with mathematics and natural science. The third centre we call the Expression Centre and here we deal with all the art, craft, music, uh, drama, PE. We have adopted a scheme where teachers specialise in a centre, either for a term, and this year we've tried it on a yearly basis. You're going to sit down too? Yeah. We've made the school open the parents are allowed into the schoolyard at any time. They're allowed into the rooms at any time they wish. They can stay for as long as they wish um, in the rooms um, and help the teachers if, you know, if it's possible. Otherwise, just to observe. We see Lennox House as a, as a sort of more direct contact point with the community than the school. It's running on a social level at the moment. Um, the mums feel uh, freer to come into that situation. It's like a, a, a sort of mother's club or father's club because um, some fathers are involved as well. And we're gradually bringing them to Lennox House. From Lennox House we then envisage um, filtering them into the school. children's own time to give them some excitement at school, some feeling of belonging to school, something to look forward to and something they can think about and experience in groups and even write about later on. I feel that many children go right through school from kindergarten through to high school without being given the possibility of choosing what they wish to do in any period of the day. Even the activities of art and, and perhaps social studies, often are very, very restricted and the children don't really have a free choice. They might go into group, but they're not allowed to do nothing if they wish to, and I think this is important. They're allowed to do nothing or just stand and watch. That's learning. Are they the same as the colours in the rainbow? The way things float, the way things move, air currents, how they pop, just seeing things. have a role to play because schools have got to see 
that if the children aren't prepared for their future when they leave school, there's something wrong with the school. So what we're doing is integrating a good number of the trades uh, with a workshop, which we're asking the Schools Commission to provide us the material, we'll build it for the students, and all our syllabuses, our English, our maths, our science, our consumer education, our careers education, have all been drawn up by our own staff here and which are directly related to all of the trades that, that we can accommodate. The businessmen in the community, the tradesmen, have volunteered, or about 30 of them, 25 to 30, to come to the school for an hour or so each per week to assist in the workshop. And with that, we will have a, an ongoing work experience program, not something that's going to go for a fortnight, but each of the students will be working on an individual program of, of his own. So some students, for example, will be going out for five weeks, back into the, or for two weeks, eh, and back into the school for five or six, out working again, back in, and so they'll be doing that for two years, having experience in a great number of trades, we hope. I've always had a a young publicity officer, a member of staff who's young and energetic and, and likes doing the job. Uh, we get a tremendous amount of help from the local press and there's not one issue in the five years that we've been here, I've been here, that we've missed something about the school in the press. It's the, the best way to get to the community. We've been lax, in fact probably not lax, in the sense that we've kept people away from schools, we don't want them in. Now that's finished, it's finished because Unemployment is one aspect that people have started to look now, what is the school doing? And if we don't answer properly, uh, they'll take over as well they should. And I would, in the long run, see this place as the focal point of the community. There's a hell of a lot of things go on here now, in midweeks and at night. We're getting an assembly hall which I expect to be used by the community. I, I would hope that the library eventually will become a community library. All the aspects of that resources up there available to the community. So that one would imagine at night, Friday night, uh, parents and some of the students with them would be using all aspects of this place uh, as the local community centre for, for Gilgander because it hasn't got one at the moment. There might even be a keg on on a Friday night. <laughs>